ladies and gentlemen, to uh, present to you uh, Augustin Bolu, who's a Belgian. Give Augustin a big round of applause. Uh, Thank you. Two questions. First of all, Augustin, who are you? Well, hello everybody, and um, thanks for having me. I'm Bolu Augustin, I'm from Belgium, and I'm one of the co-founders of the Years for Climate movement. Question number two. Give us a teaser of what you're going to do later today. All right, so um, yeah, I'm having a speech uh, later this afternoon about this climate crisis and this human crisis we're facing all together today. So stay until the end and we see us together later. Thank you. There we are, teaser. Augustin Bolu, merci beaucoup, uh, Thank Augustin. You. <clears throat> On vous retrouve tout à l'heure. Um, now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a uh, second round table. Which drivers for sustainable and inclusive growth. Uh, uh, this uh, topic uh, about uh, sustainable and inclusive growth, uh, as you know, seas and oceans have uh, been recognized as sustainable drivers uh, for the European economy, the maritime pillar uh, of cohesion policy, and they have obviously great potential for innovation and growth. We're going to discuss this. Once again, your questions on Slido are welcome. I'm going to ask Sophie to come on the stage. Sophie's a big role in the middle there. Sophie, if you could start the proceedings. Now, uh, let's start of all, uh, first of all with uh, Catalina Paratico. Hello. Um, the Blue Growth uh, community has worked during the last three years, I think, uh, in order to find synergies, to build uh, alliances, and to favorize the cooperation uh, among members and to support the creation, the creation of thematic clusters. Uh, so during the last year, I think that you uh, decided to add an extra activity uh, to your working plan and you promoted the development of a summer school on blue growth. First of all, why did you decide to do this? And secondly, uh, can you tell us more about the experience? Yes, of course. Thank you for, uh, for this question. Um, it's a question I will answer in, in, a, in a minute. I would like to uh, explain uh, before uh, the context um, um, on which this, this idea came to our community. So it started, started in the context of the Blue Growth community, which works transversally uh, on a number of sectors included in the so-called Blue Economy. Uh, to give you an overview of what is a blue economy, I can tell that the blue economy represents roughly 6 million uh, jobs. Uh, it generates a gross added value of uh, almost uh, um, 500 billion a, a year. And uh, we know uh, from literature and from experts that this, uh, um, this sector um, um, further uh, can, can, uh, can uh, uh, reach a further grow in a, a number of areas which are highlighted within the European Blue Growth Strategy. Um, essentially, the, the Blue Growth Strategy um, consists of three components. One component is the development of sectors that have a high potential of sustainable jobs and growth. For example, aquaculture, for example, coastal tourism, uh, blue energies, um, and, and others. Uh, a second is uh, uh, development of essential components to provide knowledge, legal certainty, and security in the blue economy. And here we have uh, mar marine uh, knowledge to improve access to information about the sea. Then we have a maritime special planning for ensure an efficient and sustainable management of activities in the sea. And the integrated maritime surveillance to give authorities a better picture of what is happening in the sea. Uh, finally, um, to promote sea basin strategies to ensure tailor made. Uh, measures to foster cooperation between countries. And then there we have uh, uh, the um, Adriatic Ionian Sea strategy, the Mediterranean strategy, etc. cetera. Uh, in this context, uh, as, um, a, as a community, we have worked with six projects. 
Uh, one of these is an integrated project and the others are modular project. Um, and we have realized, of course, these synergies, this cooperation, this support to clusters, but also a needs analysis which highlights some key issues of the blue economy development. Uh, one of these, of these needs that emerged uh, is uh, um, the need of developing blue skills and new jobs in the maritime sectors. I also, uh, we have just finalized also our uh, policy paper with some key recommendations. I keep the occasion for reading some of, of these. And uh, they are, for example, to promote a new paradigm for, for blue economy based on sustainability, developing a long-term vision and delivering concrete solutions to overcome environmental impacts. Another one is explore synergies amongst um, blue economy sectors and promote establishment of permanent clusters as a strategic asset for sustainable blue growth. Then strengthen cooperation among MED countries, both EU and non-EU, uh, ensuring data sharing, knowledge exchange, technology transfers, industrial cooperation, mobility of experts and professionals, and still achieve harmonization of uh, national legislation, rules and procedures, ensure durable funds and financial instruments, accelerate coastal marine planning and use them as tools uh, uh, to promote uh, sustainable blue economy. And finally, and this is the, the key for our decision of having this extra activity, the investment in education and awareness raising, creating opportunities to develop new blue skills uh, at all educational levels. Um, being aware of the high level uh, of innovation in the blue sectors, uh, we decided uh, together with the other partners and uh, with the members, the many members of the community, to uh, offer the opportunity for um, developing uh, blue skills and uh, exchange knowledge and valorizing research for more sustainable uh, Mediterranean Sea. It was clear since the beginning that uh, the state of the heart, at the state of the heart, there is a high uh, fragmentation of the approach in the existing uh, education system. Uh, in fact, graduate uh, programs uh, and career developments uh, are mainly fragmented and or highly specialized. And sometimes they are explicitly marine-based, marine, um, um, strictly marine-based uh, disciplines, and uh, in other cases they are integrated with other disciplines. So not really a linear uh, path to follow for those who are interested to develop blue economy activities. On the other hand, we also uh, found that it is important, important for blue skills and new jobs to guarantee sustainability and uh, social inclusion. Um, the initiative of creating the, social, the, uh, the summer school uh, on emerging technologies, trends, and opportunities for blue growth took into consideration all, all these elements and offered a training opportunity not only to students, so not only to academic students, but also to public administration officers to, and to business actors. So a various target coming from uh, 13 uh, countries, from, uh, the, uh, med from the Med area, from uh, Europe, and from the south part of the Mediterranean. The approach has been interdisciplinary and integrated for, above, for, uh, for uh, avoid uh, the above said problem of fragmentation. And, uh, and it, uh, the approach has been also very concrete with some sessions dedicated to theoretical um, parts and also some sessions dedicated to the elaboration of uh, concrete projects of blue economy. Um, Quickly, if you could uh, resume, because we um, I want to make sure everybody has uh, so uh, yeah, a quick conclusion. I, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm concluding. Yeah, the experience has been uh, the occasion for uh, implementing uh, community building dynamics, which is really important for the community. And uh, in fact, the members of the community participated both uh, as uh, uh, knowledge givers and as knowledge keepers, and uh, uh, we addressed. Uh, 
of course, uh, not only to students, but also to public administration and business actors. And this uh, has also offered the occasion for uh, capitalization experience, uh, above all uh, the sessions that were concretely some labs. And finally, we can conclude that uh, um, the high participation of this uh, to this initiative has confirmed our understanding of a vivid interest of both the public and the private sectors on opportunities of growth offered by the blue economy. Some uh, experience will be uh, now developed by Marcos, who is, was is part of the community uh, and uh, will illustrate also more specifically blue uh, energy examples. Thank you. Uh, grazie. Thank you very much indeed. Um, if we could have, uh, if you could do it in five minutes, because I would like to have some time for questions. I will try. I have a presentation. Also, if it's possible to show, I have two slides in the presentation, two main slides, because my presentation, my, my intervention focus on two things. How important was Interreg Med for somebody who is working on blue energy in order to understand the environment, the, the global environment of blue economy? Blue energy is one thing of the blue economy that is competing maybe with other fields like fisheries, like uh, um, uh, tourism and so on. So it was very important for us if, if we can have the presentation. It will, Should we have will slide, slide number okay. one? Would be great. Slide number two, please. Uh, so it was important to understand as experts on blue energy the difficulties that we face if we must consider all the other sectors that are competing in the sea for space, for money and for uh, uh, policies. So it was a great experience. I want to share with you that uh, we had the opportunity through the horizontal project, and Katerina knows very well what I'm talking about, to, to have the input from the other sectors. So us to develop a common approach. Now, the second one, uh, here is the strategy of MED. You can see it, I don't explain. It was very important for us to be part of this community. The, because you see, modular projects are referring to certain sectors and through the horizontal projects we can communicate among us and have a better view of the global picture. Also, the modular projects uh, have the international, the cooperation among uh, countries that share the sea and this is very important because we have to have common approaches in Mediterranean, especially for the field of uh, blue energy. Second slide, uh, third slide please. In order to go to the uh, more concrete uh, project uh, results of ours. So, Pelagos project was dealing with blue energy. Blue energy is a huge domain because it's the future. If we want to, to uh, uh, speak about 80% of renewables that are, uh, we have targets for 80% renewables in, uh, in Europe until 2050, uh, we don't have land to install. Uh, uh, application, so we have to exploit uh, the potential of the seas, and uh, this is very crucial. So, some technologies like offshore wind is, are mature, but are, others are not so mature and need further investigation. So, what did in Pelagos? We brought together from um, companies, uh, we brought together uh, all the actors uh, uh, in the field of blue energy in Mediterranean, all, most of them, and uh, formed uh, the Mediterranean cluster for blue energy uh, in Mediterranean. As you can see, we have gathered 40, uh, 150 members from seven countries, 300 approximately are from industry, 90 from academia, 33 from regional and national authorities, and 23 from uh, society. Uh, the first cluster of blue energy was created in Mediterranean through the InterregMed program and this is a great achievement because you can't bring together all these actors, discuss among them and share opportunities, experiences and developing new skills, innovative skills for uh, uh, answering this challenge of blue energy. So, uh, as you can see, the cluster is consisted from uh, national hubs. National hubs did their own national work, and this was really a great success. For Greece, 
I will present you because we are in Greece and maybe it's worth it to hear the experience of Greece and what this national hub offered to this, let's say, big challenge of blue energy. For Greece, we had, through the architecture of this hub, we had the involvement in the works of this hub that, as I, I say, involved industry, academia, uh, policy makers and uh, civil society, but we had involved in the strategic administration body, the focus group, our Ministry of Energy and Environment, who is the 100% the responsible for making the policy. So we had the best possible way to capitalize our results. So they followed all the works that we have done uh, in this national hub, and as a result, I'm really very happy to say that, is that from now, from, from uh, the project period and after, the blue energy is very high in the agenda of our Greek uh, ministry policy planning. And because of this discussion and because of this exchange of interactions between private sector, research academia and so on, we have made, we have made a major decision, policy decision, to very soon announce the first pilot of uh, wind, uh, offshore wind farms in Greece. I must say, and I conclude because I know the time is not uh, with my side to explain everything, I want to say that for a GNC, the case of offshore floating offshore wind turbines is really the best uh, solution because we can exploit, because in Aegean we have uh, big depths, so floating can uh, exploit uh, uh, the majority of the potential in the Aegean, and most importantly, they can be installed away from the source of violence that is a touristic, very, uh, very sensitive touristic domain. So this was the Perfect. great uh, experience of Efkaristo. us. Efkaristo, thank you very much <laughs> so, indeed, uh, wonderful. Okay. Right, let's uh, find out about social and creative uh, uh, community, uh, to build up a model for sustainable and uh, inclusive uh, growth, because we've obviously seen that decarbonisation um, technologies need to work together. Mariana Cavoni, if you can do it in four minutes, that would be fantastic, because I okay. do want some time for questions afterwards, and we have a quite tight okay. time tip. I'll be very quick. And uh, thank you very much for this opportunity to the MET program that for uh, us is uh, an, a continuation of uh, creative uh, community building, uh, the process that we started the first uh, three years um, ago. And uh, I'd like to um, start with uh, generally my uh, speech with uh, a synthesis from a report of Nesta. Uh, we are a social uh, and creative community, and uh, in this report is reported that uh, companies that combine art and science within their workforce are more likely to bring radical innovation to market. So we think that our communities is very, um, act very uh, in a cross uh, um, in a cross way with, um, within all the uh, all the thematic community, and uh, uh, starting from this and uh, from what was the main objective of the Interagmed program at the beginning of this journey, uh, that was to promote sustainable growth in the Mediterranean area by fostering innovative concepts and practices. We start three years ago uh, this. Uh, uh, this adventure, <laughs> we, let me say, because uh, it was uh, a, a different way to um, uh, to work uh, um, with um, all our modular project. We have uh, 11 modular project that we as a Talia project manager in this community that have uh, many different topics. We go from uh, cultural and creative industries, cluster in the internationalization, cross fertilization, uh, co create uh, uh, textile and clothing. Uh, it was a, a, a very a challenge to, uh, to bring together all of these, uh, um, these uh, topics. And uh, what 
uh, we, mm, we tried to do was uh, uh, nudge consolidation of result and uh, their adoption uh, at the regional level and uh, promoting also the geographical extension of the results. And um, this was a, a work uh, very difficult to do. And uh, so in uh, our works, uh, we start with the community building in the first phase. And then we try also to, uh, to develop some uh, uh, useful <coughs> tool for uh, policy makers and for stakeholders in order to, um, uh, with uh, some um, artificial intelligence uh, uh, tool to help in order to um, uh, discover uh, synergies and also uh, to, um, uh, to give the possibility to make uh, the search on a database that reports the results of all our 11 all modular projects um, in order to make the search not without a case search, but without the concept. So in this way, we will be able to, uh, we as a policy maker or stakeholder, to find uh, very inner um, collaboration, uh, very inner uh, synergies, and uh, to to try also uh, in this way to have more uh, uh, collaboration and also to have the possibility to to create uh, synergies. Uh, in this way, so uh, we uh, you can um, discover <laughs> this uh, and uh, prove uh, this tool uh, together with um, also uh, toolkit where we collect all uh, the results of our uh, modular project uh, in our uh, at the end of the, the week uh, in the, our uh, website that is. Uh, uh, social and creative slash interreg uh, dot uh, EU. And, Say it again uh, so yes. we get it. Social? Social and creative slash interreg med uh, point, uh, dot EU. Perfect. Okay. So. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Right. Um, uh, there we are. Yes. Uh, Mariana Cavone. Uh, now let's talk about tourism because tourism and traveling is obviously a, a great driver uh, for growth, but it also consumes uh, a lot of uh, energy. Um, Roberto uh, Grassi, I think you're going to tell us what are the major challenges <coughs> faced for creating your sustainable tourism uh, community from a group of similar uh, projects. And you also have with you Spiros Navis. I think you're going to tell us about this as a duo. Yes, as a journalist. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, yes, first of all, uh, it is important um, to give some numbers to set the, the context uh, in which we, we, are, we have been working in these years. Um, the, the, the data says that in 2015, we received as Mediterranean countries more than 300 million international tourists. And the forecast says that in 2030, we will have about 500 million tourists. Compared with the inhabitants, it's a ratio of four, more or less four tourists per Mediterranean citizen. So it is a, a very big and important uh, topic to talk about uh, tourism. And of course, we can understand from these uh, initial numbers that uh, sustainability is the only way uh, to, to deal with that. Um, additionally, we have to say that there are two characteristics for the tourism sector. The first one is fragmentation, and the second is complexity. It means that uh, uh, there are, there, we don't have a common uh, framework uh, in, the, in, in Europe, in the Mediterranean countries, and neither in Europe. So every state, every region, every local authorities is working with its, pro, uh, its proper uh, legislation and framework and planning. Additionally, we have a lot of actors uh, working on the tourism sector, from the, the private uh, actors, private sectors, NGOs, citizens, local authorities, and public authorities. So it is a very complex world. And uh, this complexity, complexity is also uh, seen in what is our community. We have uh, 
uh, the biggest community in the in the Mediterranean in the Interact Med with uh, now 17 projects. Um, I think I can say that five more projects are joining the community, and by the way, congratulations and welcome. Um, those projects are working uh, with the tourism in tourism uh, under different point of views. Uh, some of them are offering new products, uh, new sustainable products, ecotourism, uh, sustainable fishing, uh, trekking in the mountains. Um, Eco marine museums. Uh, some of them are working and dealing with the pressures that tourism is uh, is uh, taking to the territories. For example, the the pressure on the uh, the use of water or the use of energy. Uh, some of them are working with the uh, territorial planning. So it is a, a great variety. So from our first challenge was how to transform this complexity into an opportunity, how to pass from the complexity and the fragmentation into the simplicity. Uh, and so what we did was, what we decided to do was to, uh, first of all, to sign a declaration, which is called the Athens Declaration, that was signed here uh, in Athens two years ago, in October 2017, from all the people of the projects. Uh, because that declaration was important because altogether we decided what uh, were uh, our intentions. Uh, we set the framework and we set um, our intentions to, to, to improve the situation. And I think that was the moment where all the people of the projects uh, felt really to be into a community. And that was very important for us. Then the second uh, big challenge was Okay, now that we have all these projects working uh, on their innovation and on their innovative projects uh, and products and actions, uh, how do we get the most out of that? Um, how do we transform these single activities into something that is important not only for us, because we, the people of the Interact Med, uh, are all aware of the importance of the concept of sustainability. But how do we pass this message to the, to the stakeholders? And, uh, and so we decided to work with the projects. We divided them into four working groups, uh, dealing with the topics that they chose, monitoring uh, the tourism, uh, dealing with the pressures, how to promote uh, sustainability as a, a, a new model for, for tourism, and the governance. So they, they work together and we produce some document that is now in the hand of the policymakers. And uh, uh, I think it is important also to have uh, a more, more technical view on this work, also to have a view on the future. And for this, I will pass uh, the floor to my colleague Spiros. Spiros, tell us about. Uh, Not what for me, doing. it's for Roberto. Eh? Okay. <laughs> okay, so thank you. Uh, apart from uh, uh, having an impact on the policy side, we also wanted to be more operational. Uh, so we started uh, with uh, realizing that uh, we are being funded for bringing change and solve some uh, problems. So we tried to pass this to, to the whole projects, and uh, uh, we focused on the, in order to, to be. Uh, really ready to, to solve the projects, uh, to solve the problems. We focus on two aspects. Uh, th this was the, the usefulness of the projects and the feasibility of their outputs. So uh, we insisted on projects to, 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 to give us all their outputs, not only the main outputs. Uh, we were calling them and uh, we were uh, uh, acting like the mafia. Okay, bring us uh, your outputs. But we have sent them all. No, you are hiding something from us. So uh, we had uh, very fruitful discussions. <laughs> and the uh, projects, uh, I'm just joking, uh, projects were very keen in providing us, uh, uh, in, in, uh, in looking with us uh, what the, the true impact of their uh, uh, projects will be. Uh, and then we tried to make them be uh, more feasible. We, were, we had extended talks on issues like the cost of implementation, uh, the, the time frame, the stakeholder needs. And uh, then we, when all projects had realized uh, what the impact and the, how they could be feasible, uh, we looked at, uh, uh, at, at, uh, at, the, at, the, at the issue of replicability. And uh, now, uh, 
we have uh, managed to compose a catalog uh, of outputs uh, that we will use in order to, to drive our future steps. Uh, we, are, uh, we are planning to have a transferability campaign and uh, with this uh, uh, catalog of outputs, and uh, I should say here that we have three outputs per project. So it's a huge, uh, we have a huge potential as we are a large uh, uh, community. Now we are going to the regional authorities, the local authorities, and try to convince them to start using uh, uh, these uh, this outputs. And we are confident that we can achieve that uh, change because we, we have already seen some of the outputs of the projects to be uh, included in the policy. I can, I can mention here the, in the region of Thessaly that has launched a call for diving tourism inspired from the Blue Med. Uh, I, I, can, I can say uh, also uh, the, for the region of Catalonia that gives a bonus, a premium to to applicants for tourism funding when they use the Mitomet Plus indicators and all this stuff. So we will have this catalog, our Bible, and we are going to, to try to uh, make uh, uh, the, the regional and local authorities starting using these uh, outputs. Thank you very much. I was very fair. You were perfect. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Spiros, for your uh, description of the mafia activities that are sometimes uh, necessary to achieve uh, good ends. Uh, so, obviously, we've been talking about traditional uh, growth uh, models, which are finding it more and more difficult uh, to do develop to uh, deliver on all these challenges of uh, development. That's why uh, Mislav Kovac from the Croatian Ministry of Regional Development and EU Funds, you're going to tell us how Panoramed can boost a sustainable and inclusive growth. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is for it your... business as usual? Obviously, it's not the case. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your question. Now that I start to think what to answer to you, then I realize a uh, real dimension of Panoramed and the propulsion of our work because sometimes, you know, due to day-to-day -to -day task, it's hard to see uh, the bigger picture of uh, your work. Uh, so the fact is that Panoramed is a project financed under Interregmed program, but our uh, higher aim or our higher goal is to become a process, to become a platform, uh, some sort of magnet, you know, to attract the people, the knowledge, a good experience, the synergies, different initiative in order to get back to the Mediterranean, to the, to the society. Of course, we are not humanitarians, we are just dealing with the governance. And uh, we are not also sectorially focused projects. We have some teams within our projects that are, we are dealing with, but we are dealing with the governance in that teams. And we, will, and we would like to improve the governance, the processes, uh, the, let's say change the minds, to stretch the boundaries, to remove the boundaries in that sector. And I think this is uh, how Panoramet can boost the growth. We can call it sustainable, inclusive, smart, whatever we want. But I think this is the best way uh, how Panoramet uh, can boost uh, the growth. Uh, Panoramet is also, uh, Panoramet mirrors the geographical dimension of the program. So in Panoramet, uh, countries that are participating in the program participates also in Panoramet, some with their region. So we have a lot of partners. And uh, this is, uh, I think, the biggest treasure of uh, what we have now in the Mediterranean program because uh, I don't think that this was the case before, but for example, in the sector of tourism, now you have all the experts, so the really policy makers who are uh, having a discussion, having an exchanges and try to look in the future how to uh, not boost only the tourism, but boost the uh, Mediterranean region um, overall. Uh, also, I would not bother you with the concrete or maybe uh, the title of what we have done or our results, but just for you to understand, so uh, today we heard about our uh, strategic projects that we are very proud of, uh, that are 
trying to, to, to make changes in the maritime surveillance sector and in the also coastal and maritime tourism to make differences. As I told you, this was the top-down approach. So uh, this, is, this was like a unique experience for everybody to participate and try to find the, uh, the, best, the best way how to, uh, how to create uh, the project and, and, um, and the synergies. Also, we are, uh, yesterday we have, for example, a meeting where we discuss about the policy recommendation paper. So when I put this in the context, we see ourselves as a doctor, <laughs> doctors, you know, who will prescribe the medicine towards the policy. So we identify where it hurts, but now we would like to remove this pain. I am just, you know, telling you what is, what is the context and what is uh, the, the, the dimension of our work. So I think this is something that is worth to develop further and worth to uh, further uh, financing. And uh, my last uh, intervention would be, uh, since I'm coming from Croatia, you know that Croatia is the newest member state. Uh, before also we participate in transnational pro uh, cooperation, but for us this project uh, where we participate and uh, having the exchanges and participated equally in the governance process in the Mediterranean, in the region, is very useful for us. It's a very new experience and, of course, we are very happy to uh, be part of, of maybe Panoramed in the future as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Quite know what that was. Anyway, so to uh, just a, a point from my um, point of view, so we've been listening to you also being uh, competitive uh, and resilient, resilient under the challenging uh, conditions that you've been describing can only be uh, secured through the creation of sustainable territorial backward linkages, which uh, ensure local economies' integration into a wider uh, value chain. I think we can say that the old Gordian knot, Gordian knot obviously uh, relevant here, that uh, we're in uh, Greece of growth versus environment is no longer valid. I think that's what you've uh, all been uh, saying, as the private sector itself is shifting away from products with high climate risks. There was a recent report published by S&P Global Ratings showed that the responsible loans market drew dramatically over the last year, jumping from 32 billion in 2018 to 111.5 billion as of July 2019. So this demonstrates very clearly the green and blue economies are not just an environmental necessity anymore. They also make economic sense, as you can see from that uh, figure. Uh, increasing our collective ambitions, and that's also, uh, of course, motivated by the new Green Deal, which Ursula von der Leyen talks about uh, very much uh, uh, with her commission, which is coming in uh, next uh, week uh, and is going to take that as being a top priority. So there we are. We've finished exactly on time. If you have any questions for them, I'm sure you're uh, going to be around during the lunch. You all seem to be very friendly friendly and approachable people, so please don't hesitate to ask them. Thank you very much. Big round of applause. Thank you. You can uh, now leave your seats and uh, go down and uh, join the audience. Oh, sorry, you, you want to stay. Right, okay, right, okay. And you want a photograph, do you? If we all have to stand up for the photograph. Let's stand up for the photograph. And let's uh, have it. A photographer here coming uh, all the way. And if I could suggest you give them all a big round of applause, they'll smile, and you'll see it's a, a much better photograph. There we are, look, they're smiling. Okay, I'm sorry, it's my fault. You have to stay, and then you can uh, react with uh, our next uh, uh, panelists who are coming to talk about uh, overcoming borders, the cross-border cooperation experience on land and sea. So obviously in 2015, the European Territorial Cooperation Corporation celebrated 20 years, and we will turn now uh, to starting with cross-border uh, cooperation over shared land borders. It grew over the years, covering full EU borderlines, internal and external, terrestrial and maritime. And in this next panel, we will have a closer look at cooperation programs covering the Mediterranean Basin. Please welcome our uh, panelists. Uh, thank you.
Right, euh, nous allons commencer donc en français, je crois, euh, par un des premiers programmes de coopération dont nous allons parler, établi de part et d'autre des Pyrénées entre la France, l'Espagne et Andorre. Donc, Christina Igua, est-ce que vous pouvez nous, nous décrire en quelques mots, s'il vous plaît, l'impact de votre programme de coopération sur le territoire frontalier Oui, bon, euh, merci beaucoup. Il y a quelques jours, on pouvait lire dans le journal le plus important de l'Espagne, El País, une nouvelle, une information inquiétante. La, la, la représentante de l'autorité de gestion du programme MED, Agnès Rampal, l'a évoqué ce matin, mais je crois que c'est tellement important que je vais répéter cette information. 500 millions de personnes sur trois continents sont unies par le même problème, le changement climatique. Certains des impacts de cette crise ont frappé plus durement le bassin méditerranéen que d'autres régions du monde. L'augmentation la la, de la température dans la région méditerranéen a atteint 1,5 degré par rapport au niveau pré-industriel. Dans la communication de la, communi de, la, de la Commission au Conseil et au Parlement européen pour stimuler la croissance et la cohésion des territoires des régions frontalières, la Commission a identifié plusieurs obstacles transfrontaliers. Mais la solution a, a été aussi identifiée, la coopération transfrontalière ou transnationale. Notre frontière est assez particulière. Nous avons une barrière naturelle le massif pyrénéen, une grande montagne, avec deux extrêmes maritimes, au côté, la, la Méditerranée au côté est et l'océan Atlantique au côté ouest. Et nous avons un petit pays au milieu, l'Andorre, qui n'appartient pas à l'Union européenne, mais qui appartient, bien sûr, participe au programme. En plus, notre autorité de gestion, la communauté de travail des Pyrénées, c'est un organisme transfrontalier composé par deux régions françaises, quatre régions espagnoles et l'Andorre. Dans nos territoires, on parle cinq langues. Les langues du programme sont l'espagnol et le français, mais il y a des millions de personnes parlant catalan et basque. La cinquième langue, c'est l'occitan. Promouvoir le multilinguisme est pour nous prioritaire pas seulement parce que c'est notre patrimoine culturel, mais aussi parce que la connaissance de la langue du voisin facilite la coopération. Les programmes de coopération, nous avons comme objectif effacer les frontières, notamment la plus difficile de tous, les frontières mentales. Quand les citoyens français, espagnols et andorrans commencent à parler, ils constatent qu'ils ont tous les mêmes problèmes, quel que soit le domaine, la santé, le R2, euh, le changement climatique, etc. N'importe quel domaine. Essayer de, le, de trouver la solution, chacun de son côté, n'est pas intelligente. La solution doit être conjointe. Et c'est à ce moment-là que la participation des programmes est fondamentale. Mais il ne, faut, il ne faut pas être naïf. La, la coopération, ça prend du temps. Ici, dans cette salle, nous, nous le savons tous. Des fois, ce n'est pas simple. Mais tous les programmes et tous les projets confirment que seuls, nous allons plus vite. Mais ensemble, nous allons plus loin. Sans coopération, il n'y a pas de l'Europe. Parfait. Merci beaucoup. Euh, nous avons donc deux programme de coopération maritime entre la France et l'Italie d'un côté et puis entre Grèce et Chypre de l'autre. Jasmine Andreus du programme Maritimo. Je pense que vous allez nous présenter d'abord entre l'Italie et la France. Oui, exactement. Vous m'entendez Oui. Okay. Très bien. Bon, en fait, merci pour cette invitation. En tant que programme Italie-France Maritimo, nous sommes... Euh, ravie en fait d'être présente à cet événement qui est très important d'ailleurs et euh, j'ai introduit un peu euh, la zone en fait euh, qui euh, nous couvrons avec les programmes donc on parle en fait du nord de la Tyrénie 
euh, en impliquant les régions de la Toscane et de la Ligurie et de l'île de la Sardaigne du côté de l'Italie et euh, des départements du Var et des Alpes-Maritimes du côté de la France et de l'île de la Corse. Euh, nous parlons donc d'un territoire de plus que euh, 6 millions d'habitants. Nous avons en fait euh, dans cette programmation financée euh, 98 projets, euh, touché en fait 723 euh, bénéficiaires, et cela à travers les quatre axes des prioritaires du programme. Euh, nous avons en fait euh, eu la possibilité de financer des, des projets qui fonctionnent transversalement dans les quatre secteurs identifiés qui sont les nautismes, chantier naval, les tourismes innovants et durables, les biotechnologies bleu et vert, les énergies renouvelables bleu et vert. Les clusters donc considérés en fait par les programmes sont la croissance et l'emploi, l'environnement en sécurité, patrimoine commun et les petites distances. En fait, euh, ensemble euh, aux autres programmes transfrontaliers et transnationaux, euh, nous couvrons en fait, nous travaillons avec dans les bassins de la Méditerranée. Les bassins de la Méditerranée euh, a une, un élément clé en fait, qui c'est la mer. Et euh, cette mer a une valeur stratégique. Et nous tous, en fait, soit les, les, les transfrontaliers que les transnationales, travaillons euh, et se, se trouvons en fait en face des mêmes défis. Nous travaillons sur les mêmes objectifs, mais avec des approches différentes. En tant que programme Italie-France maritime, nous pensons et nous croyons qu'il est important de garder ce, ce type de statut parce qu'en fait, ces programmes travaillent dans une façon complémentaire. Et bien sûr, euh, les programmes trans transnationaux, ils travaillent dans des macro-régions, ils font un travail très important, mais aussi les travaux transfrontaliers et les, les, en particulier je parle du programme maritime, sont très importants parce qu'ils travaillent dans un niveau local, une sensibilisation en fait, des, des acteurs locaux. Euh, J'aimerais bien amener, euh, apporter en fait, un exemple euh, sur les clusters de, de l'environnement dont on a en fait, euh, financé euh, des projets sur la gestion des risques. Euh, là, euh, ces projets, en fait, les réalisations de ces projets sont très importantes parce que euh, ce sont des réalisations qui, euh, qui euh, ont un une certain degré en fait, de transférabilité et de durabilité. Nous parlons euh, des, des gestions des risques, nous parlons en fait des, des risques euh, d'inondation, des réduisions côtières, euh, de, de risques en fait, d'incendie et aussi de la sécurité en mer. Et ces projets euh, ont euh, créé des, des, des systèmes d'alerte et de suivi, des infrastructures de prévention des risques. Et euh, jusqu'à maintenant, en fait, nous avons 32 institutions qui ont pris, qui ont, euh, qui ont pris en, fait, en considération et ont adopté les stratégies et les plans d'action des risques directement liés au programme. C'est vrai que l'implication en fait, de ces acteurs, euh, qui ce sont des acteurs publics, euh, est, est clé dans la, dans la planification de la gestion des risques, mais il a aussi apporté en fait, une, une contribution concrète à l'amélioration de la réactivité des acteurs locaux. Les résultats ont été euh, qui se sont euh, concrétisés des relations de collaboration durable entre les mêmes entre les mêmes acteurs, en fait, et que les acteurs maintenant sont plus formés pour travailler avec des approches intégrées au-delà des frontières. Donc ça, c'est un exemple qui nous trouvons en fait, euh, être aussi une bonne pratique. Et en parlant du changement climatique, c'est pour ça qu'en qu tant que euh, programme Italie-France maritime, nous sommes en, fait, euh, en fait disponibles à collaborer nous sommes déjà en contact, bien sûr, les programmes qui, qui travaillent dans, dans ce bassin de la Méditerranée. Mais nous euh, souhaitons et on est disponible à travailler encore plus efficacement en fait, dans des actions de coordination aussi pour la prochaine programmation et euh, au niveau aussi de plus opérationnel et fonctionnel. 
nous sommes convaincus que ça doit commencer euh, dès le stade de la planification afin de pouvoir bien implémenter la gestion. Et de plus, en fait, ce qu'on souhaiterait beaucoup, c'est de, c'est de, faire, de trouver des formes conjointes de capitalisation afin de faciliter la transférabilité et la communication des résultats et créer des opportunités d'échange et de rencontre entre les projets qui fassent les mêmes défis. Merci, merci pour ces explications uh, très claires. Uh, and uh, we go to Asterios Philatos. You're talking Greek? Okay. Philatos is the last name, sorry. Okay, perfect. Are you talking English, Greek or French? Uh, Greek. Greek, okay. Maybe uh, we... Pause for 10 seconds so that people um, uh, can put on their headphones. Donc, uh, um, uh, nous allons parler grec. Uh, so, uh, you tell us about the uh, maritime border between uh, Greece and Cyprus, if you could. Καλημέρα. Ευχαριστώ καλά τα αρχήν και για την πρόσκληση στο συγκεκριμένο συνέδριο. Θα ήθελα να πω ότι είμαι πολύ ευτυχισμένο γιατί έχω ακούσει του προηγούμενου συναδέλφου σε όλε τι συνεδρίε, όπου έχουν πει κάποια πράγματα τα οποία ήθελα να αναφέρω κι εγώ. Και χαίρομαι γιατί πραγματικά νιώθω ότι έχουμε τον ίδιο βηματισμό σε πολλά πράγματα. Πρωτού όμω μπω σε αυτά, να περιγράψω λίγο την επιλέξιμη περιοχή του προγράμματο, η οποία είναι, για όσου γνωρίζουν, το Βόρειο Αιγαίο, το Νότιο Αιγαίο και η Κρήτη από την ελληνική πλευρά και το σύνολο τη Κύπρου από την κυπριακή πλευρά. Όπω καταλαβαίνετε, είναι μια ιδιαίτερη περιοχή γιατί είναι αποκλειστικά και μόνο νησιωτική, με εκατοντάδε νησιά από την ελληνική πλευρά στην επιλέξιμη περιοχή και το ενιαίο κράτο τη Κύπρου, που είναι νησιωτικό από την άλλη πλευρά. Ένα άλλο πράγμα το οποίο, όπω καταλαβαίνετε, μα συνδέει και είναι, διευκολύνει πάρα πολύ τη συνεργασία είναι η κοινή γλώσσα, οι κοινοί πολιτισμοί που έχουμε με τη χώρα αυτή και η κοινή ιστορία. Και φυσικά αυτό έχει δημιουργήσει ε, καταρχήν τη δυνατότητα να αναπτύξουμε υφιστάμενα δίκτυα που υπήρχαν και πριν το πρόγραμμα. Να υπενθυμίσω ότι το Ελλάδα-Κύπρος και η Κύπρος, και λόγω του ότι η Κύπρος εντάχθηκε το 2014, ουσιαστικά ξεκίνησε στις διάφορες περιόδους το 2015. Οπότε έχουμε 13 χρόνια συνεργασίας μέσα στις 14, στις διάφορες αυτές περιόδους προγραμματικές, όπου έχουμε αρχίσει από βρεφικά, νηπιακά βήματα στην αρχή όσον αφορά την δυνατότητα του δικαιούχου να συνεργάζονται μεταξύ τους. Και αυτό είναι ιδιαίτερα σημαντικό, γιατί αυτό έχει αναδείξει ότι η διασυνορική συνεργασία και το πρόγραμμα του Ελλάδα-Κύπρος έχει καταφέρει καταρχήν να πετυχαίνει την ενδυνάμωση των δικαιούχων γιατί πλέον έχουμε φτάσει σε μια προγραμματική περίοδο το 2014-2020, όπου υπάρχουν πληθώρα προτάσεων οι οποίες θέλουν να αναπτυχθούν, να συνεργαστούν μεταξύ τους οι δικαιούχοι. Και πλέον έχουμε φτάσει από το σημείο το οποίο στην αρχή ξεκινήσαμε να ψάχνουμε εμείς για να δημιουργήσουμε αυτές τις συνεργασίες, πλέον να υπάρχουν πάρα πολλές προτάσεις οι οποίες δημιουργούνται μόνοι του και έρχονται ως πρόταση σε εμά. Και είναι προτάσεις σοβαρές αυτές που έρχονται. Το άλλο που με χαροποιεί είναι η δυνατότητα που υπάρχει και ότι πλέον έχουμε αναπτύξει κάποια εργαλεία μέσα στο πρόγραμμα, ώστε να μπορούν να είναι τα αποτελέσματα βιώσιμα. Γιατί για μένα οτιδήποτε και να χρηματοδοτείται, είναι πάρα πολύ ωραίο πράγμα το να αναπτύσσονται διαφορετικέ ιδέε, είναι πάρα πολύ ωραίο πράγμα να δοκιμάζονται. Το σημαντικότερο όμω από όλα αυτά τα πράγματα είναι να είναι λειτουργικό καταρχήν για, για του τοπικού δικαιούχου και πάνω απ' όλα να είναι βιώσιμο ώστε να μπορεί να συνεχίσει και στι επόμενε περιόδου είτε από μόνο του είτε με επιπλέον χρηματοδότηση. Ε, στα πλαίσια αυτά, χαίρομαι πάρα πολύ για το Blow Growth που έχει αναπτύξει το δικό μα Υπουργείο, στο οποίο συμμετέχει, δεν γνωρίζω, ε, στο οποίο θα μπορούσαμε να κάνουμε μια ευρύτερη συνεργασία όσον αφορά, γιατί οι θεματικέ που έχει ούτω ή άλλω το πρόγραμμα Ελλάδα και η Προ είναι περίπου ίδιε με τα υπόλοιπα προγράμματα θαλάσσια ε, θαλάσσιων συνόρων, που είναι η επιχειρηματικότητα, οι δεξιότητε, οι δυνατότητε ανάπτυξη πληροφοριακών εφαρμογών όσον αφορά τη διακυβέρνηση, είναι η κλιματική αλλαγή, η διαχείριση κινδύνων, είναι το περιβάλλον, ο πολιτισμό, ο τουρισμό και φυσικά είναι και το θαλάσσιο χωροταξικό, το οποίο είναι ένα έργο το οποίο το είχαμε εγκρίνει και στην προηγούμενη προγραμματική και συνεχίζεται και στην επόμενη, 
με ε, δικαιούχο μέσα το Υπουργείο Περιβάλλοντο αυτή τη στιγμή, τη Γενική Γραμματεία Χωροταξία, όπου στην κοινή μα θάλασσα θα αναπτυχθεί ένα κοινό σχέδιο ουσιαστικά και θα αντιμετωπίζονται κοινά τα πράγματα. Αυτό δείχνει και την, τις δυνατότητε που υπάρχουν στι συνεργασίε και την ε, λογική που πρέπει να υπάρχει σε μια Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση ότι ό,τι και να γίνει πρέπει να υπάρχουν και τα τοπικά διασυνεργά προγράμματα ώστε να μπορέσουν να αναπτύσσουν τις συγκεκριμένε λογικέ και ενδυνάμωση καταρχήν των, τοπικών, των δυνητικών δικαιούχων των χωρών και ταυτόχρονα να αναπτύσσουν τις εξειδικεύσεις που χρειάζονται οι γενικότερες στρατηγικές στους τόπους που, των δύο χωρών. Αυτά από μένα. Ευχαριστώ. Thank you very much indeed. Um, just before we have a general debate, um, I'd like to actually go into the audience because we have the representative of the Slovenia Croatia uh, program who is with us, Mr. Tade Baskovic. Uh, Mr. Baskovic, where are you? Here. Right. Okay. Big round of applause for Mr. Uh, Baskovic. Uh, I think you have a. Uh, to, uh, a few things you would like to say about uh, how you cooperate uh, uh, together. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I come from Slovenia. I am the head of the Joint Secretariat of the Slovenia-Croatia program. Uh, our cooperation in this area has a quite, let's say, long history. It started in 2003 with a trilateral program between Slovenia, Croatia and uh, Hungary. It then continued as the EPA program in 2007 and 2013, uh, and when Croatia joined uh, European Union, became a full member in 2013, and changed to ERDF. Uh, now we are in the full implementation of the current program in this financial perspective, 2014-2020. Uh, it shows a great interest for cooperation uh, because, uh, let's say, we had uh, 300 applications received uh, in this current uh, program, and we have already committed all the available funds. Uh, regarding the capitalization, uh, it is relatively new for our program. Uh, we are, of course, interested in this, but uh, have not, not tackled it so far. Uh, now we are in the process of the programming for the new program, for the future financial perspective. And, of course, we'll have to seriously think about uh, capitalization and uh, also define uh, the process. Uh, we are interested in the methodology, the definition of the capitalization to reach, let's say, the common approach and the common understanding uh, for the future. Uh, we are basically here to listen and to learn for more mature, let's say, programs in the sense of capitalization and we strongly support your effort. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. Tade Baskovic. How do you listen? You're very, you seem to be a very friendly person. People can come and talk to you during the lunch break and everything. There we are. So you have uh, his contact if you would like to uh, ask him questions or suggest uh, methods for uh, cooperation. Um, now, wow, you have quite a lot of uh, questions. Um, let's have a look and see which one should we take. Don't you think... Panoramed should focus on climate change. The big issue for MED, besides its initial focus on the themes of tourism and maritime uh, surveillance. Anybody like to... Quick answers, because we've got a lot, a lot of questions. Anybody like to take that one? Are the... Um, uh, is the focus sometimes wrong? Yes. Uh, yeah, of course, the climate change is very important. Uh, issue and uh, we started to do some in that uh, respect but I would not discover our cards because it is not uh, really concrete yet so once it will be some uh, concrete results then uh, we can discuss of course uh, the focus thematic focus of Panoramed and the teams that we have in Panoramed are not grave in the stone so we are open to we, we, we are ready to open any issues or any uh, s sectors that uh, the community finds important for uh, and that would like to improve the governance, so for sure. Yes, but it's always the problem with climate changes. Is this a standalone uh, team or is it some uh, horizontal aspects? So we also need to see. 
Christine euh, Moi, je voulais répondre à une autre question. Oui, ça va euh, À la deuxi deuxième, c'est ça euh, Non, la... Euh, on va les faire une par ah, une. Uh, uh, anybody else on that thing, the first question, do you think Panorama Edge should focus on climate change, the big issue, besides its initial focus? Any other comments about that Right, let's go on to the second one. How can we accelerate the transformation of med economies from linear to circular? Who would like to, any uh, suggestions on such a vast uh, question? How, what, what means can we have to accelerate the transformation of med economies from linear to circular? Not an easy question, would you like to? Well, yeah, I think that uh, um, what we are doing now, so also, um, um, boosting awareness, uh, awareness raising, or also uh, this cross fertilization, this contamination of approaches of, uh, uh, of values. Uh, of course, these communities, so this, uh, this, this big community, which is the, 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 that is the, the MED big community, is uh, sharing values. And already, this sharing of values, of knowledge, of approaches is a way to to favor this circular economy? Huh? Yes, it's a very interesting question. I think that uh, we all uh, are uh, uh, understanding better that uh, everything is a circle, really. That is uh, the truth. Uh, taking, for example, for the blue energy, let's say, uh, idea, um, if you see it independently on, from the other sectors, you, you cannot have uh, economies of, um, of uh, climax. So if you, if you use the infrastructure of fishery, of uh, a, a blue energy installation, a wind farm, and around it you build, uh, uh, you, you, you make a fishery that is for, uh, uh, you know, for open sea, and you use the results of the, the wind turbine for the fishery needs and, and vice versa, you can, you can achieve something around circular economy. It's not exactly this, but it's, it's an idea. So for me, it's very important, very important, the communication between sectors. And the horizontal projects are really a, a great contribution on that. Anyone else from linear to circular? No uptakers? Let's go to the next one. Based on your experience, what is the major difficulty in overcoming uh, securing the uptake of project results? Based on your, what's the major difficulty uh, of this? What is the obstacles? Yes. Okay. Well, um, I think uh, one of the reasons is uh, a lack of communication between the key actors. Uh, and I can answer also with an example. Um, recently, what, uh, in, in Sicily, where with the help, with the support of the horizontal project, we set up a working group composed by all the Sicilian actors uh, involved in the community of tourism. And we brought them together in a room with the regional authorities. And the first thing that they said was, we never talk uh, together. That is, this is the first time that we talk together. People of the projects uh, acting on the ground and uh, regional authorities that are in how, charge How is of that possible? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but mm, I, it is not, I, I probably it is not a, a common situation. In other regions, they are most advanced in this, uh, in this organization. But in, in this uh, particular case, uh, we saw that they, they, they just said, uh, we live in, in the same region and we do the same job, but we never talk together. So from this uh, initial uh, um, meeting, what did they propose? Uh, the, the, the projects, the people of the project, prepared a document of pro proposing to the region uh, how to uh, overcome this problem and how to deal with that and how to, it is possible a new organization among them. And I'm very happy to, 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 to talk about this example because uh, it is really a concrete example of what I was saying before the projects, the people of the project do not feel alone now. They feel that they are in a community. And together they can reach uh, 
higher stakeholders, uh, bigger ob objectives, and so on. So it's creating these networks you were talking about, yes? yes? And I would like to add something on that. Uh, this is why the horizontal projects are important and why the communities are important, because now we foresee some money for the project representatives to, to come to the next meetings, to the next uh, initiatives of our community. So uh, when, when, we, when we say, when we see the sustainability, it is, we firstly have to, to see if the people that uh, uh, trigger, the that run the project, really believe in the project. And now we have the, the means to, to make the, the projects that have ended to, to, to have a follow-up, to, to follow the community and to try to, to make uh, their results lasting. I would like to add something. Now we are entering a new phase for the communities, uh, the thematic communities. And I think this is a challenge. I mean, if we, uh, in this period, some modular, some projects are closing. If we, um, um, if we have as an objective, an, a main objective to keep people, people, I mean really people, not only results coming from closed projects, but people as active members of, uh, uh, of our communities, uh, this is also a way for keeping the, their results alive. Otherwise, we risk that we, we, we continue with uh, new projects, uh, but we leave behind the achieved results coming from the old projects. So it's really important that those who were members of the um, communities because uh, partners of the closed project continue to stay in the community as stakeholders, as, uh, as uh, organizations, as uh, active members again. Ε, νομίζω ότι είναι κάποια πράγματα, συμφωνώ με όλου του συναδέλφου, αλλά νομίζω ότι πρέπει να ξεκινήσουμε λίγο με κάποια τεχνικά ζητήματα. Και όταν λέω τεχνικά, θα, καταλα... θα σα εξηγήσω. Ε, καταρχήν, υπόθηκε... υπόθηκε, νομίζω, στο πάνελ που ήταν πριν το διάλειμμα, ότι ένα βασικό κομμάτι για να έχουμε βιωσιμότητα στα αποτελέσματα είναι το να το θέλει ο ίδιο ο δικαιούχο. Το οποίο σημαίνει ότι όταν συμμετέχει σε ένα εταιρικό σχήμα. Εκτό ότι δεν πρέπει να συμμετέχει ενεργά, θα πρέπει και ο θελό να συμμετέχει. Και όχι απλά επειδή πρέπει. Είτε γιατί θα πάρει κάποια χρήματα, είτε θα πάρει για κάποιο δόν εξοπλισμό ή οτιδήποτε άλλο. Συνεπώ θα πρέπει να διασφαλίζουμε με κάποιο τρόπο αυτό το πράγμα. Ένα δεύτερο μεγάλο κομμάτι είναι η πολιτική πώληση όμω. Δηλαδή, οτιδήποτε κάνουμε ή θα πρέπει να είναι σύμφωνο και ακόλουθο τη πολιτική τη εκάστοτε χώρα, είτε θα πρέπει να παράγει νέα πολιτική, η οποία όμως θα είναι στη συνέχεια εφαρμόσιμη από το, τη χώρα. Συνεπώς, για να μπορεί να είναι λειτουργικό, παύλα, βιώσιμο, το οποιοδήποτε αποτέλεσμα, θα πρέπει να υπάρχουν καταρχήν αυτά τα δύο πράγματα. Και το τρίτο, που για μένα δεν υπάρχει πουθενά στον κανονισμό και ίσως θα πρέπει να μεταβληθεί κατά κάποιο τρόπο, εκτός από το όλο, την όλη δικτύωση, την ανταλλαγή τεχνογνωσία και οτιδήποτε έχουμε κάνει, όταν παράγουμε κάτι, θα πρέπει να μπορούμε να το τροποποιήσουμε στην επόμενη πραγματική με την εξέλιξη. Όλα τα πράγματα εξελίσσονται. Συνεπώ, όταν παράγω ένα αποτέλεσμα, δεν σημαίνει ότι θα το έχω για τα επόμενα 20 χρόνια. Θα πρέπει αυτό να έχει μια διαρκή εξέλιξη από τη στιγμή που θα δημιουργηθεί. Γιατί αλλάζονται, μεταβάλλονται και τα δεδομένα. Είτε αυτά είναι η κλιματική αλλαγή, είτε οτιδήποτε άλλο, είτε επιχειρηματικότητα, οικονομία, τουρισμό, όλα αυτά. Όλα αυτά μεταβάλλονται με τον χρόνο. Αντιστοίχω, πρέπει να μεταβάλλεται και το αποτέλεσμα και να προσαρμόζεται και το αποτέλεσμα του έργου που έχει παραχθεί. Αυτά. Okay, ευχαριστώ. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, it's true we want cross-border cooperation. How can we cope with countries which border the Mediterranean but have different cultures and priorities? Anybody want to attack that one? How is it possible to... Yes, who would like to yes. know? I yes? Think that, uh, it is very important to have uh, um, and uh, sharing results also for the other program. Uh, in fact, with the, uh, the tools that we are um, developing, the idea was not to use 
that with the result of our community, but also with the other communities, the other programs eventually, because in this way, uh, each policy maker, for example, uh, could know what uh, is done in a specific uh, topic in all the European uh, region. So I think that uh, it is very important. Okay, let's have a look at... Uh some other new questions which you've been sending in. I made sure we've had that one. Do you think that cooperation between programs could generate added value for the territories and the citizens when setting up cooperation program priorities? Are local and regional actors sufficiently informed? Uh, oh, we lost that. Uh, can they express their views and be considered? And public sector is largely bureaucratic. The quest is how to efficiently involve the private sector, maybe include business perspective as project outcome. Anybody like to attack uh, any of those in the last five minutes? Yes, go for it, please. Est-ce qu'on peut reprendre parce qu'on n'avait pas votre micro? Okay, please. C'est bien. Est-ce que um, could you take the, le, le micro là? C'est voilà. Prenez ce, ce micro. Je pense que ça est. Hello. Oui. Concernant la question de, de la coopération entre les programmes, s'il y a des bénéfices pour la population, pour les citoyens, je crois que c'était comme ça la, la question. Um, s'il y a des coopérations entre les programmes, c'est qu'il y a de, coop la, de la coopération entre les projets. Et s'il y a des projets, il y a un bénéfice pour les citoyens. Um, euh, dans notre frontière, les projets ont commencé à contacter euh, des, des projets hors, de, hors notre territoire. Les pompiers catalans qui, ont, um, qui font de la coopération avec les pompiers français depuis des années ont commencé aussi à parler avec les pompiers de Luxembourg et de la Belgique. Euh, nous, le programme, bon, nous faisons la même chose, c'est pour ça nous, qu -ce que nous sommes ici aujourd'hui. Et nous, le programme POCTEFA, nous organisons un événement de capitalisation le 26 et 27 novembre à Jaca, Espagne. Et nous avons bien sûr invité d'autres programmes, la frontière Italie-France, Alcotra et le programme Sudoé. Toute l'information est sur notre site web poctefa.eu. Si vous n'hésitez pas à vous inscrire si vous êtes intéressé. Nous, nous sommes convaincus de l'importance de la coopération entre les programmes et de l'importance de, de la capitalisation. C'est pour ça qu'on a été étonné de ne voir de référence dans le règlement provisoire de la Commission européenne. Dans le programme Interreg, on teste les projets et on profite des résultats obtenus pour prendre des décisions territoriales. Et tout ça a une conséquence et un bénéfice pour les citoyens. Merci beaucoup. Uh, would you like to add something? Not for another question? For yes, another you can question. answer any of the questions. Which one would you like to yes. address? You have it here in front of you, too. I want to, to uh, give uh, my opinion about the last question. Public sector is largely bureaucratic, and uh, if the private sector should be more actively involved. Uh, public sector, yes, is bureaucratic, more difficult, more not so flexible, but is crucial to participate because it's the one that implements the policies or, or the achievement of the results of the projects without the public sector is really not so obviously, ca cannot be so obviously used. So for me, it's important to participate, the participation of the public sector because of that, but actively involved and not uh, just be there. But of course, from our experience, because we had the project that uh, we had this four helix approach in our cluster, that means we involved everybody, public sector, private companies, academia research, and also civil society. All of them have a crucial role for new things. For All we discuss is new. Circular economy is new. Blue economy is new. Everything is new. Sustainable tourism, everything. So we need to have all of them because you need innovation, you need policy, you need somebody to implement the project that is a private sector, and of course you have to have the agreement of civil society also. In order. So four helix approach is the ideal. So for me, 
I would suggest the new generation of MED program to involve more the private sector because they are crucial uh, concerning the technical capacities. They are the one that will implement things. And so, yes, I agree, but not leave out any of the rest of the, you know, uh, stakeholders. It's really very important to find the balance. Yes, uh, I agree with, uh, with you. In fact, uh, this is the same that I mentioned before um, about our program uh, on the risk, uh, climate uh, risk, in fact. We involve the public sector, private sector, and it comes a result, a result in the cooperation area. I would like just to add something. Uh, as, at least for our community, uh, we are composed on the basis of the market failures. If the market has succeeded to, 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 to solve all the problems, we will not be useful. So, yes, private sector uh, is essential, but uh, we are dealing with many public goods, the environment, ecosystem services, and all this stuff. So, we will not only be balanced to uh, only be focused on the private sector because yes, we had some projects that they have produced uh, directly marketable uh, outputs, but we had some other projects that uh, could not uh, have such a, an output. So, uh, I close with a question: a system of indicators let's say, that measure the sustainability of tourism. What is it? It is a public good, it is a private good, so we have to consider that in order to, to see the usefulness of the communities and the, each project. Okay. Okay, did we cover all the other questions? Um, when setting up cooperation programs, are local and regional actors informed? Can they express their views and be considered? Um, do you think that cooperation between programs could generate added value for the territories and cultures? And we answer the first question. Any other comments you wish to make? No, right. Well, thank you very much. I think we've had a... a please stay seated, because I think we're going to have a photogra uh, photograph in a minute. But there we are. Thank you very much indeed. I will do the photograph in a minute, OK? I just want to make the um, the uh, lunch uh, things. It's very important I tell you what's going to happen during your lunch, because otherwise you'll all go and you won't know what will happen. So please check on the Agora program. You check the floor plan in the app to find the conference you wish to attend and all the Agora uh, corners are identified. Don't worry about lunch. Uh, it will be served throughout the break up until 15.15. We're in Greece. People eat late. Uh, so enjoy the Agora and the lunch. If you, don't, if you haven't done so, don't forget to vote for your favorite picture. Uh, and for those leaving after lunch, please leave your translation headsets. It's very important. At the entrance, when giving back the uh, headset, give your name to the person who receives it. Don't drop your headset without checking yourself out. It's very important that you do so, so we've known who gives their headset back. Don't forget the surprises that wait for you. If you want to get inspired, stay with us until the end. And at 3.15 p.m., the afternoon sessions will start. So please be back. Bon appétit. Thank you very much indeed. And once again, a big round of applause for our panelists. A very interesting discussion. And we will have a photograph now. Thank you.